Hello class, today we're going to be focusing on additional topics within SQL, specifically around data definition language and data manipulation. In previous lecture, we talked at a high level around constraints. And I want to start there in terms of making sure that we understand what constraints can be um, leveraged in terms of truly being able to modify tables within SQL. Initially, let's talk about constraints that can be defined within the create table and also within alter. There are essentially five different types of constraints that you need to be aware of. The first one is related to the primary key, um, which may not have any null values um, since it uses unique identifier. Um, additionally, anything that is classified as unique may not have null values. When we're looking at null, not null, foreign key, and check are all different types of constraints that we're going to talk about over the next several classes. If you are looking at creating relationships from a SQL perspective, you're going to use that through, um, through leveraging the constraint command to tie the artist from one table to the artist another in this example. This SQL will allow you to go in, create the table work, and show the relationships between the tables. Additionally, another example, if we're creating both tables for artists and for work, this allows us to go in and create constraints around the primary key as well as unique, as well as the different delete and update actions that are required. The alter statement assists you in changing the table structure. A good example of the alter table will allow you to both add the constraints as well as the conditions around which they're being um, um, added. So if I'm looking at a SQL statement for adding and dropping columns, the following statement will add a column um, to the customer table that you see below. Where this is going to alter table customer, it's going to add my column, character 5, value null. You can use similar SQL in terms of dropping existing columns. This is an example of how to use a, um, an alter table column, an uh, alter table command to drop a column. Alter can also be used to add a constraint and to drop a constraint. The examples of SQL that you're seeing are most commonly used within the SQL for, uh, for Oracle and SQL Server. The, um, some specific commands will be different within Microsoft Access. Later in this lecture, I'll show different screens in terms of leveraging SQL both within Oracle, SQL Server, and Microsoft Access. If we are looking at the drop table command, you've seen this in previous lectures, the SQL drop table command is as shown. If there are constraints, you're, what you're going to first want to do is start with an alter table command and then drop the constraints. Think of it sequentially. So you'll, you'll essentially go in for each table, so alter table customer, alter table, um, and drop the constraint, um, and then drop the table. Similarly, if I'm going to use the insert command, you're going to both identify where you are inserting, the fields that you're inserting to, and then the values that you're putting into the fields. If you're doing a bulk insert, you'll be able to pull it from a larger list, in this case from an imported artist table, which will allow you to pull the different information about the artist from additional table in a bulk manner. Very common example for an update command, which you've seen over and over, update customer set city equal New York, now, where you are doing that on a larger um, span is you're going to be doing it for more than one record. So you're going to be setting area code equals 333, where city equals Denver. So it's going off of an overall value, not a specific amount. Another good example of DML would be around the delete command. The delete command showing a delete from customer, where customer ID equals 1,000. Key here is going to be making sure you have a WHERE clause. If you don't have a WHERE clause, you'll be deleting every row in your table. I repeat, make sure that you're aware that if you don't have the WHERE clause, you will delete every row in the table. Now, at the start of the lecture, I talked about 
DDL and DML. I want to make sure that you are clear in terms of the categorization. And some of this is covered in the textbook. If we are looking at DDL, essentially, as I previously stated, it's used for creating tables, relationships, and other structures. And if I'm doing data manipulation, it's for queries and data modification. So if I'm looking at some tables within SQL Server, this is what you will see when we get later into the semester in terms of how the tables are displayed. If I'm running SQL statements from Microsoft Access, you'll be doing that from the design view. Additionally, it will allow you to show the SQL view within the design view to show you the, um, the commands as they're being written. If you're using the wizard, it will allow you to populate first, and then you can go into the SQL view to see what the commands look like when you're done. At that point, you'll be able to run the SQL command. Now be careful if you are typing SQL for the first time to make sure that you're saving your SQL before running it. Now if I'm going in, if I'm running the query and, and using it from scratch versus the wizard, this is what a result would look like for the SQL. Now if I'm going to be um, if I'm going to be running SQL statements for Oracle, you're going to be doing a lot more in the command prompt in terms of identifying um, usernames and passwords and where the items need to occur. So as you can see, you're going to be seeing a little bit more of what the data actually looks like, um, and it makes it critical to understand how to leverage the command line prompt. So if I'm going into the command line within Oracle, I need to very clearly make sure that I look at the framework for SQL as it expects to be read by Oracle. So if you notice, we get into more of the semicolons and more of the, um, more of the look and feel of SQL in terms of ampersands, in terms of italicies. So you need to look at this when we get into SQL um, on on Oracle, I'll be providing a set list of instructions to make sure it's you're properly following it. So if I'm in Oracle and I'm doing a select statement, um, this is how Oracle would return the results. If I'm doing a specifying column order, it's going to pull information from tables, which allows you to, to do more extraction from the data and keep everything cleaner. And here's a good example of the results from the distinct keyword. So when I do a select distinct, I'm specifically going to be looking for distinct buyers. So if Cindy Lowe or Jerry Martin or any of these people bought additional items from additional departments, they're only going to show up one time because I want a distinct buyer. As we all know, my favorite, the, uh, the asterisk in terms of selecting all. Additionally, you can use the conditional expressions for specific rows from a table, even if you're selecting all, or map it back to specific rows from one table. As we previously showed, you get a fair amount of query results when you're using the SQL view with an access. The same results from SQL, if you're using SQL Server, would appear as below. So you'll see how I have the, the SQL command up top, as well as the results in the bottom. Oracle, again, different perspective. This is more so you can see what your results are going to look like. They're all running the same SQL statement, but they all display just a little bit differently with the same data. Now, Oracle has um, a software that my team uses called Toad, which allows them to um, connect remotely into um, our database server. Um, when you're using Toad, you get a, a different view into Oracle, um, which is free, um, which is allowing you to do some more command line, uh, command line data entry, and this is what the results would look like using that software. If you're using MySQL, which is an open source database, again, you'll notice same data, same results. It's all about how it's being viewed. If you're using the query browser within MySQL, again, which is an open source version or free version that of a data, uh, enterprise database that's closer to the functionality of SQL Server, this is what you would see in terms of where you're entering 
your SQL commands as well as what the results would show. This is a great example of showing a select all in terms of an order by. As you know, you can do the select from and where, and then you'll be getting into how you are dealing with the results. In this case, I want to show order, number, and then price. So I'm going to be um, I'm going to be sorting in that situation. So if we did price then order, it will be showing the price information in, in pricing order versus order number order. As mentioned, the default is going to be ascending order. If you go in and do descending order, you can specifically put in DESC to show descending. So if we go back to the um, if we go back to the previous review, this is doing the order by order number. This one's doing the order by price first and in descending. So as you see, the order of the order number and the first one was going up. In the second display, it's not concerned with the order number, it's concerned with the price, and then the price is going down. Okay. Now, if we get into additional options and clauses, you're then going to be able to search on more than one con conditional parameter. So this SQL will show both where the department equals water sports and the buyer equals Nancy Myers. You can do more than one condition. It allows you to parse out the data. You'll see this in many reports if you're using a report writing tool to make sure that you are able to fine tune the data that you're reviewing while setting multiple conditional expressions. Besides and, you can also do or. Or gives you a whole number of where, uh, I'm sorry, where gives you a whole number of clauses where you can look to um, slice and dice your data. In this case, they want to pull the information whether the department equals camping or climbing. So this is a great example for when you're looking at exams in terms of here is what the SQL expression is and what do you anticipate the results to be. Besides, um, besides and and or, you also have the in um, component, which is going to show the information for those items. You also have a not in, so showing not in that specific value. So in this situation, it's not showing Pete Hansen, where in the previous, I'm sorry, where it is showing Pete Hansen, where the previous it's not. So for the in statement, it only wants to show the records where it's Nancy, Cindy, or Jerry. And the not in wants to show where it's not Nancy, Cindy, or Jerry. You can also use expressions like between. So if I want to show where the price is between 100 and 200, this is how you would execute the SQL command and this is what the results would look like. Again, when you're reviewing for the exam, look at the SQL command on this, look at what the results are going to be and under understand why, especially as it changes if you're adding additional expressions. So if I want to use math symbols and I want to show you know, less than um, the the, the uh, greater than or equal to 100 or um, less than or equal to 200, it's going to pull those specific components. And uh, these math operators allow you to um, leverage the conditional expressions properly to get the best results overall. In order to do that, you really need to truly understand both the where clauses as well as how to leverage wildcards. We previously covered wildcards in terms of showing the percentage sign. What I want to make sure that we are looking at is ensuring that the keyword like is combined with the symbols. So if I'm looking at the, the where clause with like and the wildcards, this is going to show both where um, the buyer contains Pete or the buyer's name starts with Pete. where in this situation, this example, the, the percentage sign is going to show where in the description it contains tent or ends in tent. So you'll see the percentage sign and then tent. And if you look at the SKU description, it has the half dome tent. So since it has tent as part of it, both of these are displaying. 
Now, if you're using some of the underscore components, it allows you to get multiple fields. So if I'm getting this example where I want the SKU number, I'm going to want it to be in the 200. So you'd have the percentage sign um, for 2, and then basically by going with underscores, it will show you it will show you all that are within the um, that are in the above 200 range. It's key when you're looking at this that you remember the five built-in SQL functions. You need to know these five things for your exam. You've already seen it before, you're going to see it again. You need to know that SQL can handle count. You need to know that SQL can handle sum. You need to know that SQL can handle average. You need to know that SQL can handle minimum and that SQL can handle maximum. And here's some good examples of that. Because what I'm doing in this situation is I'm going to actually go in and I'm going to sum the extended price so that way I'm able to get full amounts and then do an order um, order number perspective based off of the price. This will allow me if I'm doing summary reports in terms of how many items were purchased, how many, how, how much did a server make in a um, in a restaurant on Tuesday, how many uh, motorcycles did did the uh, Harley dealership sell. You're going to need this type of SQL so that I can pull average order price, so I can pull maximum price, so I can show the minimum price that was sold, etc. So just keep keep in mind as you're looking at these. Do we count? Do we distinct? Do we sum? You can do your standard math calculations. So I'm doing selecting quantity times price, and I'm making that as extended price. So it's allowing me to show, for this example, the EP is the extended price, um, and the quantity is one. It also allows for string functions, which we'll come back to. Group by is critical when looking at in the overall how you're going to show the results in this situation. It looks at it from a department and buyer perspective where it's going to go with the ascending order unless otherwise specified. In some situations, in general in the overall actually, you're going to, you have to place where before the group by. Um, the some products will allow it, but you always need to put it there. Having will always result in the groups that are presenting the result. And you do have some ambiguity in statements that involve both where and having. Um, the easiest way around that that I always tell my students is to, is to always put where before having. So always put where before group by, always put where before having. And here's a good example. So I'm getting the select, the from, the where, and then once I have the where, I'm ordering the results first by grouping them by department and then ordering them. I always tend to make sure that I put having above order. I always do order last in terms of how I want to show the final ordering of the results because in this situation, if you do a 5,000 foot view, 1,000 foot view, 500 foot view, etc., you're getting your select from where, you're grouping the results, then you're parsing out those results um, in terms of what contains a certain item, um, and then you're ordering based off of that item. Similarly, we can look at this in terms of how to query multiple tables and set up subqueries, and then continue on down those roads. Similarly, you'd follow the same thought process for joins, which we've covered in previous virtual lectures as we step through and map out items. And this is the end of this virtual lecture. Thank you.